Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh, working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the course that's Professional Communication for Managers. Session 7 is on Corporate Reports. So, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that what's the objective as well as the need of corporate reports and as budding managers why you need to study that how to prepare reports. Also in this session I am going to highlight about the types of corporate reports which you are going to prepare during your career. Also I am going to highlight the planning process or the stages which you will be coming across while drafting a formal report and also I am going to talk about the basic format of a formal report. Now moving further with the concept and first we need to understand that what is actually a report is. Yes, a report is an informative statement which is going to be coming from a reputable source, some authenticated source, some authoritative source. If I go back to the evolution aspect, that from where this term evoluted, yes, report is a term which evoluted or which came from a Latin term that's reporter, which means to carry back, bear back or bring back. So what we are doing in a report, that's what we are doing it. We are bringing back certain facts and figures in front of the other person. So a report is somewhere an informative statement which is being stated by a sender to a receiver. And what you are doing, you are trying to bring certain facts, figures, information, emotions, feelings in the form of the report to the audience. Now if I talk about the report itself, yes. It's approximately 75% of the time. Yes, the time, the figure is actually a good one, a big one. In fact, it is approximately 75% of the time of a manager, which he or she spends either while preparing the report or reviewing the reports or analyzing the reports or just reading the report. So somewhere the 75% looks for the overall things that yes somewhere you are going to be involved with the corporate reports only. Now also irrespective of the profession in which you are normally what happens that's a common notion that we believe the people who are into the sales department only they are required to prepare the sales reports or the marketing reports but no irrespective of the department as well as irrespective of the profession. I'm not talking about that only managers needs to prepare report. In fact, if I talk about a doctor, yes, he also needs to prepare the report. Of course, the parameters, the dimensions, the content is going to differ. But for sure, a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, they all need to prepare certain reports in their career. So it is irrespective of the career or the profession or the particularly the department itself. Because again, as a manager, we believe only salespeople are required, but no. Whether you are a production manager or a HR manager or being finance manager, you are going to be involved in the preparation of different types of reports. Moving further, I just want to focus upon a very defined manner what we mean by corporate reports. Yes, it is defined as a communication in which the writer, you can say the sender as well, provides an information to some individual 
or organization. Yes, it can be that you are preparing a report just for your senior manager or it can be a report which you want to circulate to all the people of the organization. So it's not that that wherever we prepare a report, we only prepare a report keeping in mind the individual person, only that one person. No. Many a times you are going to be in a situation wherein you need to prepare report for the masses, for the stakeholders, for all the suppliers, for government and so on. Now yes, it also covers employment as well as human issues. Now you might be wondering that when we are talking about business reports, why I am highlighting this point that it talks about employment as well as human issues. See, when we talk about employment, it talks about task oriented issues as well as people oriented issues. For example, some of your people, they accomplished some task. They called some audiences, the, some of the customers, they sold certain products to them and for that you want a report. Apart from that, another thing, you are preparing a report to measure the employee job satisfaction at your workplace. That is more about the human issues which involves the people of your organization. So yes, it can be we say like this that it is more of the task oriented issues as well as people oriented issues. Report does not mean that we are going to prepare only the reports which are based on task oriented. So yes, we can write it here that it can be majorly linked with the task orientation. And when we talk about human issues, it is more about people orientation. So both the orientations can be covered by the reports. Yes, also when we talk about a report, it is an assigned communication for a particular purpose. Yes, you do have a purpose behind preparation of a report. And you really need to think on that why are you preparing that report. Either you are just preparing a report to inform people about something or you are preparing a report to persuade people or to convince people for some product, some plan or so on. So that is what is you need to understand that what is going to be your purpose. And of course, when we talk about a purpose, you are going to have a speak specific receiver or audience. Now, yes, the number may vary. It can be one or it can be many. Moving further, I just want to tell upon more about corporate reports. Yes, when we talk about corporate reports, it refers to as a type of assignment. And why I'm calling it as an assignment in which you need to analyze the situation, you need to look it from the different angles, you will be jotting out the different points. And that's how you will be moving in the framework of the preparation of a report. Now, when I say report, more of a corporate report. Normally, we interpret it in the manner of formal report only. But yes, we do have informal reports that I am going to discuss the distinction between the formal as well as the informal report in the later part of the session. Business reports are majorly used for internal communication. You might be wondering why I am highlighting internal communication only. Why not external? See, we do go for reports for the external as well as internal communication. But yes, more oftenly you will be finding that the reports which you are preparing as a manager in your organization, they are being used internally. So that's why we say that it is more of the internal communication, but don't get into the wrong track. It is also for the external communication wherein you are going to communicate certain things either to the government or to your competitors or to your stakeholders, your shareholders and so on. Now, I am going to share some facts about corporate report. But before moving on to that, I just want to highlight few things. But as a manager, when you are going to be into that role, 
what are going to be the situations in which you are required to prepare a report. Just think about it, that what are going to be the different situations. Yes, it can be that you are just preparing a report wherein you are compiling your sales data or you are just preparing a report wherein you are trying to analyze the market situation, the market scenario, the change in the taste and the customer preferences or else you are just preparing a report because you want to propose a new plan, you want to propose a new change to your people or to the management. Not just this, in fact you are going to be in the situation wherein you are preparing a report of just the review performance or the performance evaluation reports of your people wherein you are trying to find out that out of 100 people who performed well, who didn't perform well, what were the reasons, you are trying to analyze the reasons as well. So see, think of any situation, any work inside the organization which you are doing. You are going to require to prepare a report. That's why I quoted that 75% of your time is going to be invested in just reading, writing, preparing, drafting, analyzing any report. So that's a big task and you cannot deny this fact that I am not going to prepare or I am not going to involve in any kind of reports. No, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. So now moving on to the facts about some corporate reports. The very first point which I want to highlight is mode of communication. Yes, when we talk about reports, you really need to think upon what is going to be your medium. We do have oral reports, we do have written reports. Yes, you might be wondering that why I am saying oral reports. Majorly whenever it is a report, it comes into our mind that it is written report. It is not an oral report, oral report is just communicating something, no, it can be. What you are reporting, what you are telling, what you are managing or carrying over to the other person that can also be a report. I am going to talk about the distinction of oral report as well as written report in the later part in the types of the reports. Apart from this, when you prepare a report that tends to reflect the writer's personality. You might say that ma'am it is so somewhere formal report, how it is going to affect or how an individual's personality is going to impact the report, but definitely it happens. The way you are, for example, if I talk about the two approaches, that is direct approach or indirect approach, right? Direct is also known as inductive approach whereas indirect inductive approach. Now when I say that yes, the report reflects the person's personality, temperament. Now you can be a person who is direct person, who wants to put the points right across without sugar coating it, without going here and there. Otherwise type B situation, you are a person wherein you then not to quote the direct facts directly. First you try to build the ground and then only you will be coming up with the information which you want to share. So yes, whatever approach you are adopting that somewhere or the other conveys your personality also, that what kind of a person you are. Many a times we believe that uh, when it is an indirect approach being taken care by the person, that person values relationships more. Whereas when it is about the direct approach, we believe that such people, they are more of blunt nature who tends to come up with the right information at the right front. They are not going to sugarcoat it because they are more worried, they are more involved with the task. They are not taking care of the emotions of the people. So that is how we do say that yes, a report tends to impact or somewhere uh, it is being reflected through a report, the personality of the writer. Also yes, it needs to be in the highly structured format if you are going for a formal report as whether it is formal or it is informal. Always remember one thing, every report is going to be in some predefined or predetermined set. Yes, 
it might be the case that you are not going for the format, but the content is going to be predefined. It is going to be in some structured order, right? Language needs to be concise and clear. As many a times I have told you in the oral communication that we should avoid using wordy expressions. Avoid the use of unnecessary words. Make your message concise or you can also say that as brief as possible, as accurate as possible because they again are the basics of communication whether oral or written. Not just this, yes, when we talk about a report, it's a factual statement. Moving further, I will be talking on types of reports. Yes, when I say that you tend to spend a lot of your time in preparing, analyzing or reading a report, there are different types of reports which you will come across. It can be oral report, written report, formal, informal, proposal, all such kind of reports. So first you need to understand that what are the situations in which you will be going for oral reports because every report, whether it's short report, long report, formal, informal, proposal, periodic, any report you take, for sure they come with certain positives and negatives. Now it is you as a manager who needs to decide wisely that in which condition, at what time, what kind of report you are required to prepare. But before taking that decision, you need to develop the understanding that what these all reports are all about. Now, moving towards the differentiation that how these reports are different and in what situation you should use, you need to develop the understanding first. I'll start with the oral reports and the written reports. As I quoted, oral reports is just face-to-face -face communication, right, which is seen or observed and discussed. Now, when I say face-to-face -face communication, you might be taking it as that it cannot be a report, but yes, it is a report. If you are going and stating certain facts to your manager, that is a report. It is just that you have not prepared in, in the written format or in some writing, it is just you are stating face to face conversation. So that is also a report. But when we say face to face communication, it comes up, comes with certain positives and negatives. That report is again very quick, right? You can get very quick feedback. That's the advantage of that report because you are going to tell face to face to the concerned person and he might be giving you the feedback if he is not able to understand, he will ask you the questions and so on. So in that manner, yes, it is quite good. But at the same time, when we talk about the oral reports, we have found that somewhere it is less authentic. Why I am saying less authentic? Because accuracy of facts and figures is missing. It's not there because many a times when it is about face to face or oral report, I tends to communicate yes approximately 5% approximately 10% market growth and then I might deny. I might say sorry I didn't quote it that. So that's in that manner we believe that oral reports are not that much authentic because they have some vague facts and figures. Right. In comparison to this, when we go for the written reports, they seem to be more authentic. Why more authentic? Because it is having the record. Everything is in the written form. You can go back and find, okay, where is written what particular figure, it, whether it is 5% or 10% or 15%. You can anytime go and check. So yes, it can be documented, it can be reviewed and you can look for the accuracy aspect also. So in that manner it is good but again when we talk about the feedback and all, yes it is little bit time consuming because it will be reaching, the written record will be reaching to the concerned person and whenever that person is going to have time, that person is going to review it like this. Also one more fact, you will be finding that oral reports 
are somewhat short whereas people prefer for written reports when they are long or when large information needs to be shared. Also we tend to prepare oral reports or we tend to go for the oral report when the concept or when the information is simple but when it is sophisticated or more technical then we prefer going for written reports. Now moving further this was about the oral and the written reports now again you need to think as per the situation as per the convenience what is good for you. Moving further I will be talking about the formal reports and the informal reports. Yes when I talked about formal work formal in itself talks about predetermined predefined structures. So yes when you are going to prepare a formal report it needs to be carefully structured. It needs to be put into the structure which is predetermined by the organization or either by your senior or in consensus of the all the team members. So format or when we talk about formal it should be there that it needs to be in proper format. You cannot go on for adopting or writing any information anywhere. No, you cannot do this. At the same time, when we talk about formal reports, they are more objective in nature. They stress objectivity rather than the subjectivity. Not just this, in fact, they contain much details. And also we say that when I want to go on for sharing large information, formal report should be the ideal choice. And in comparison to this, if it is a short report, it should be, a, it can be, it can be an informal one. See, I am not saying that always this happens, but we prefer going for, if it is a long report, for sure it is going to be somewhat formal. And when it is formal, you need to have a careful structure, a predetermined structure and you need to put your material into that. Preferably, you will be finding that formal reports are written. You won't be finding formal reports in the oral way. But yes, informal reports can be both. It can be oral, it can be written as per again your convenience. So when we say formal, it should be there in your mind that it is something, the format is predetermined, pre-structured, uh, whereas in the informal way, usually we go for short messages, the language is also quite casual, right? You can use uh, people, uh, you can use guys in place of people when it is about informal one, but when it is a formal one, you really need to look for the words as well. You cannot go on for using any slangs, any jargons, right? But yes, in informal reports, we tend to go with that. But again, make sure that to whomsoever you are sharing that informal report also, that person needs to be comfortable with, with the usage of those things, jargons or some slangs or some informal language. Otherwise, avoid using it for informal reports also. I hope it's coming to you. Moving forward, I will be talking about short reports, long as well as proposal reports. Now short reports, preferably you will be finding it as one to two page reports. Maximum to maximum it reaches up to five pages. Normally it is one to two page report. And yes, also you will be finding that short reports are less formal in nature. Also, you are going to find that periodic issues or regular issues or some simple issues, we go with the short reports. We don't go on for preparing the whole report with the uh, each and everything intact, all the format. No, we don't go for that. But yes, when we talk about long report, you will be finding it as five pages minimum or more than that, right? It can reach up to 100, 120. Again, that depends on uh, your choice or the content which you want to share. Normally, you will be finding that when it is about external communication, we always prefer going with the long reports that to in the formal format, right? 
Whereas inside the internal report or you can say in for internal communication, either people are going to go for the choice is going to be more frequently, it is a short report, it is informal one, it is small report, right. So, as I said more in the format, proper format needs to be intact, right. Also one more thing that when we talk about some strategic issues and if you want to report them, go for the long report format. Any uh, new change which you want to incorporate, you should go for the long report. Why I am saying long report? Because it is a change, it is not any XYZ thing, it is a change and it requires all the details to be mentioned very clearly. So that people should understand that what the change is all about. If you are going to go in the compressed form in the short way, might be possible that the main essence of the change is being lost. So, you need to think that you are into which situation. For example, if it is an auditor's report, what you think? Is it fine to go with the informal format? Is it fine to go with the short format? No. If it is an auditor's report, it needs to be in the formal way, it needs to be in the written way. Also, it needs to, it, it is going to be a long report because it is going to cover n number of things, n number of issues they are going to highlight in the auditor's report. So, that is how you need to decide, you need to choose. If you are a salesperson who is regularly on daily basis needs to report about his sales figure to his sales manager, what do you think is the wise decision whether that person should go for the formal format or the informal one? Yes, you are right in your mind, it can be informal. It should be short or long, it can be short, why because that is a regular issue, every day he needs to do that and if he is going to prepare long reports for that or the formal reports in the proper format, he is going to consume much of the time in that only, fine. Now apart from this there is another term that is proposal report, proposal report as the name itself is suggesting that I am trying to propose a new thing, I am trying to suggest a new thing, recommend a new thing that can be changed, new product, service or plan, wherein you will be talking about, you will be discussing the positives as well as the negatives of that particular thing. You will be finding that a proposal reports needs to be somewhere in the formal format, right, have informational delivery as well as persuasive communication, these are the two important aspects if you are going to prepare a proposal report, make sure it should have complete information and at the same time that report should be able to convince the audience because you are not, you might not be there to explain the concepts, but it should be convincing, the tone should be convincing, the tone should be persuasive and that is the key to get that proposal report accepted by your seniors. Moving further, I am going to talk about two another important reports that is informational reports and analytical reports. Informational reports, yes, when you are in the organization, there are going to be situations wherein you will be preparing an informational report which is only going to highlight the features of that particular thing. For example, you are asked by your senior HR head that you need to prepare a report which should specify all the rules and regulations linked with the leave policies of the employees. What is that? That is an informational report because what you have asked him to do, you have simply asked him to mention all the leave policy related rules and regulations, that is it. That is an information which you want from your junior. So, contains detailed information without analysis. I hope from the example you are able to understand that I am not asking you that whether people are happy with the leave policy or they are not happy or what you recommend to make them happy. No, I have simply asked my junior to get me 
the information on the rules and regulations linked with the leaf policy. So, what I am looking forward to? I am only looking forward to have that information in my hand, right. So, when we talk about informational reports, there is no decision making analytical kind of skills are being used for the pre while preparing that particular report. Also, when we talk about informational reports, it requires clerical efficiency more rather than decision making or analytical that person should be good into the clerical efficiency who should be knowing that how to report each and every in fact each and every information without getting it missed. So that is the beauty of informational reports but contrary to informational reports you are going to prepare analytical reports also. Analytical requires decision making skills analytical skills right. So, similar example if I am asking you that you need to prepare a report wherein you need to mention the discuss the leave policies, leave rules and regulations of the employees of my organization as well as you need to analyze that whether people are happy, satisfied or dissatisfied with the policies and what they want to improve their satisfaction level. So, what I am going to do? When I, when you are going to prepare the report, you will be listing the uh, different rules, you will be trying to find out the connection between the satisfaction and the dissatisfaction and you will be trying to probe that what can be done to improve their satisfaction level. So, what you are doing? You are coming up with the analytical skills, with the decision making skills, with some kind of analysis at the end of the report with some kind of recommendation towards the end and that is what a analytical reports talks about. So, presents or analyzes, interprets information and makes recommendations. So, somewhere it is for solving the problems and yes for that you really need to have brilliant decision making skills and analytical skills when you are going for the preparation of analytical reports. I hope this difference is coming to you. Apart from this, yes, you are going to have some other categories of reports that is internal report. Internal report is a report which is going to float inside the organization. For example, you belong to person A belong to credit department, person B belong to collection department in a bank. And report from the credit department needs to be floated to collection department and collection department report needs to be floated to credit department so that both the departments can work in consensus and can get all the loan pending clears. So, when we talk about internal reports, yes it is the report which is going to be floated inside the organization. External reports are the way of communication or reporting certain things to the outside people, right. Uh, now, as I said auditors report or as I said uh, company progress report, you want to share that company progress report with your shareholders, with your investors because you want to tell them that yes, in the last quarter you really did well and you have some future plans and you really want that the investors should invest more in your organization. So, that is your point of view. So, that is one way of the external report. So, reports which you are going to prepare which can be used as an external communication, right. Not just this, in fact there are going to be some periodic or routine reports. Uh, for example, in your organization you come up with some kind of shift working, right. So, every day you are putting a roster wherein you are mentioning that which person is assigned which particular duty. So, that is what that is a kind of routine report, periodic report which keeps on coming either on daily basis or weekly basis and so on. So, now when we talk about routine reports, it is more of an informational kind of report, more of wherein you need to have more of the clerical efficiency in comparison to the decision making or the analytical skills. So, I hope these different types of reports are clear in your mind now and you need to think that in which situation 
which report is more good, is more authentic, is more appropriate. Now moving further, I will be highlighting the steps in writing a report. When I talk about these steps, yes, we do have five different steps which you can go on for. Yes, after this, I will be also talking about how to plan a report, that how you are going to write a report for that requires deep planning. So before that, I'm just going to highlight about the stages, uh, about the steps. So you need to define the problem and the purpose, identifying and organizing the issues which you want to investigate out of that report. You will be conducting the research part, that how that research needs to be done. And then you will be analyzing, interpreting the data and coming up with the final report. I've just explained this in a quick manner because I want to highlight all these stages in the planning aspect. Now, when we talk about planning a report, yes, it majorly covers or has three different stages. The very first stage talks about planning. Second stage talks about writing and the third stage talks about completing your report. Now these three stages are actually very crucial, very crucial for a good and authentic report. Now all these stages, they have certain sub stages as well, which I'm going to discuss in the session itself. So moving forward, the very first stage, stage one, planning phase. Now, planning phase starts with the analyzing the situation. Now, as I said, situation, you need to look for that why. Why are you preparing the report? When you are going to ask this question, why, what's the reason? You can go on for using infinitive phrases. I'll tell you what we mean by this. To persuade to inform, to analyze, to educate and so on or you can say to convince, to propose. Like this you can come up with the infinitive phrases. And you can think that why are you preparing this report? What's the reason? Either by this report you are going to inform people or by this report you are going to educate people about something or else you are going to persuade, convince, propose new thing because remember one thing, when this why is clear in your mind, the whole scenario of the report is going to be very different very very different now when you are simply talking about information you will be just stating the facts and figures but if you are talking about analyzing the situation you need to have certain tools which you will be using for analyzing the things so that's why i said that in the initial part itself you need to understand that what is your purpose why are you preparing this report and for getting the answer to why you should go on for using these infinitive phrases so that you can come up with clarity that what my objective is, what is my purpose, fine. So analytical report statement is more comprehensive. Why I am saying this? Any idea in your mind? Yes, in comparison to the informational report, analytical reporting is more comprehensive just because when I say about informational report, you are just going to provide that information, simple, right? But when I talk about analyzing that information, so with that, you will be providing the information as well as you will be analyzing it, as well as you will be providing with the recommendation or the analysis aspect. So what's more comprehensive now? I think that's coming to you that yes, analytical reports are more comprehensive, but and when it is more comprehensive, you need to understand that how to move on, right? So this is about defining your purpose. You should go on for defining the purpose. Next in line, in the analyzing part only, the analyze the situation, 
you need to go on for preparing your work plan. Most of the time, people tend to forget doing this. They just focus upon the why aspect and they move on. No, don't move on. Take a step. Take a small step wherein you need to think about that how you are going to prepare your work plan. What's going to be your blueprint? What's going to be your framework? Why I'm saying this? Because this is going to help you in saving a lot of your time. Otherwise, you will be confused that which information I should go on for, where to go on for. No, don't go for that. Prepare. Think about it. And when we say prepare, what points you should focus upon? You should focus first and the most important thing is stating your problem. You are clear with the why aspect, right? You have thought about that whether your objective is to persuade, to inform or what. Now, you need to come up with clearly stating the problem. That what the problem is all about and why are you going to prepare that report. With that, you need to look for the scope of investigation. For example, I asked you or you want to prepare a report to analyze the customer preferences about your product. Fine, some XYZ product is there and you want to analyze. Now, you first need to plan that if you are going to take or if you are going to go for any kind of survey, so what's going to be your scope of investigation? You will be only investigating in a particular city of a particular nation or you are going to go for the whole nation or you are going to go for different countries. So that is what is very much required. You need to plan, you need to think about it before moving ahead that if I'm going to prepare this report and if I'm analyzing something, what is going to be my scope of investigation? Wherein I am going to investigate? That you need to think upon and before only. Otherwise, if you will start writing the things and then if you are planning all these, then you cannot go ahead. Right? Not just this, in fact, list. Make a list. That what are the different tasks to be accomplished? Make that list. Because unnecessarily you will be troubled you will be thinking that what are the different tasks make the categories that yes i have four tasks and these four tasks again are having different subtasks how it works so that is what is required you should go on for looking for the scope of investigation as well as you should plan you should structure that what are the different tasks what are the different subtasks and then you should move on not just this, in fact, with the tasks to be accomplished, you should focus upon the schedules, the deadlines, the timelines. If I am going to collect my data from four different cities, one city I will be able to cover in 10 days, the other city just because it is a big one, I will be able to cover it in 15 days like this. Decide your timelines, decide your deadlines, also decide your constraints. Ki okay, in that particular city, these are some areas where I cannot reach due to XYZ reasons because it is again on the outer side of that city. I cannot reach there. There is no transport available for the commutation whatsoever it is. These are just the examples what I am sharing with you, right? Just look for those constraints that what are going to be the constraints. People might say that we can why are we planning for constraints? As and when constraints will come, we will try to handle. No, that's not a manager strategy. A manager strategy is always that you should try to look for the constraints, possible constraints which you might face before going into the task. That's what is a manager strategy. Look for the constraints, right? So tentative work outline with timeline. So that talks about analyzing the situation in the stage one. Moving further, the second aspect, the second sub stage in the plan one, uh, in the stage one plan is gathering information. Now, if you want to go on for some kind of analytical report, as I said that you need to plan the scope of investigation, right? After that, you need to think upon that, yes, I have decided this particular segment, this particular territory, 
but now how I need to go on for doing the research? Am I going to take small interviews of the people? Am I going to pass them some kind of questionnaire for a survey? Or I am going to just send some other person, not I. I, I, I am not going to be the part of that. I will be appointing some more people who will be going and looking forward. How I will be gathering the information? Is it going to be only a telephonic kind of conversation? Is it going to be a face to face conversation? What it is going to be? Or rather, I am just focusing on some secondary sources wherein I will be taking information from the industry publications or something. For example, if you want to go on for preparing uh, some kind of informational report, as I said that the HR manager, the HR head asked you that you need to prepare a report on what are the different policies, rules, regulations linked with the leave policy of your employees. So what do you need to do? Are you going to go for the doing survey or uh, present, putting, uh, framing certain questions and giving those questions to your people? No. In that case, you need to go on and look into the company handbook that what are the rules and then only you need to frame those rules and regulations. So see that's what you need to understand that from where you should go on for gathering the information whether it's going to be a primary source or it is going to be a secondary source. Primary source when we go on for interviews, surveys, questionnaires kind of thing. Secondary source, when we collect the data from the present material, fine. Now you have analyzed the situation, you have gathered the information, the third stage is about selecting the right medium, which medium you will be going for. Now before selecting the medium as per your own choice, as per your own convenience, you should go on for the audience preference or the audience expectations. Apart from this, you also need to look for that whether you will be going for the electronic format only or the other format. Again, first step should be you should think from the audience perspective, whatever report you are presenting. For example, you are presenting a report, you are preparing a report and you are prepared in the MS Word file, right? But uh, you wanted to present this report to some of your seniors. And you want immediate feedback as well, fine. Now your person, the person to, with whom you want to share that information with, in the MS format, he is sitting at a remote place where he cannot access his laptop, he cannot look on laptop or any other electrical medium where, in which he can go on for reading that report. So do you really think that it's a nice idea? Not at all, not at all, fine. So look for the, that. It is not always that the electronic media is only good. It is the other way around also. Many companies in US as well as Japan, what they do is they do, they go for both the types of formats. They will be discussing the reports, uh, meeting face to face or over the teleconferencing as well as they will be having it through emails, through MS uh, formats and all. So that is how they go for it. So it depends on you that which format you want to go for. So yes, you need to go for multiple media. As I quoted, you can go for multiple media or you can go for only one media. Not just this, when we talk about selecting the medium, you need to be very, very clear with the right media, right? Right media basically about that which medium you should go for. You are preparing a report which talks about investment of about $10 million, right? And you're just preparing it in a word format and sending it through the email attachment. No, that needs to be something good. It needs to be somewhere, either you should go on for some DVD or something like that. Fine, so that's what you need to go on for right medium. Also organize the information, look for direct as well as indirect approach. I have already explained you this. Upfront used when audience is receptive, that means you should go on for using the direct approach wherein you believe that your audience is re receptive, but wherever you feel like that your audience is not at all receptive, go for the 
other way around that's indirect way now stage two stage two is more about your writing part right that now you are going to write you have everything in your hand now you need to write it now you need to draft your message so adapt to your audience means that yes while writing you should take care of your tone of your politeness be courteous be concise bias free language should be used also try to build credibility with them then go on for composing your message in the prescribed format right effective sentences and proper how to introduce how to go for body close and all such things last stage is about completing the message or completing the report when i say completing yes you have the rough draft in your hand now you need to revise the message when i say revise look for the readability aspect look for that whether you are not using unnecessarily wordy expressions if yes then avoid them then remove those things then produce the message produce simply talks about your layout your format you can write as format also that look for the formatting that whatever graphical elements you have used whether they are visible or not properly placed or not if some statement is saying that look below for the picture that picture is placed there or not everything needs to be taken care of then go for the proofreading wherein you can again review the message which you have just changed and finally circulate the message circulate that report so that is all about planning or writing a report moving further i'll be talking about format of the report yes it is majorly categorized into three parts that's prefactory parts text parts supplementary parts i'll be quickly talking about prefactory parts text and then supplementary parts to begin with prefactory parts are the parts which are the starting parts of a report which tends to set the momentum of reading the report which is going to help the audience to understand that how to go on for reading a report to begin with the very first part of the prefatory part is cover page cover page yes it can be many a times every some organizations they do have a standard cover page wherein they'll be having a company's logo name and that's quite good it's imprinted every time and you need to go for that cover page only you cannot make any changes and if it is a cover so yes certain times it is very it is hard bound and beautifully looking cover apart from this if nothing is prescribed from the company side you can go on for attractive convenient but somewhat sophisticated and appropriate cover it should not be very flowery or something like that it should be somewhat sober which you should go on for preferring this style also you will be finding that certain times the cover page tends to have the report title and the writer's name which is optional which is optional which is not necessarily you will be finding it there after the cover page you will be finding another page that's title fly now title fly uh, somewhere is going to help you in adding an impression of formality to the report majorly you will be finding that on the title fly page only the title is presented nothing much then moving forward is going to be your title page now when i say title page there's a difference on the cover page it was it might be that company's logo is imprinted any other thing also which is prescribed by the company you can go on for the title there also on the title fly also but here on the title page you are going to have four blocks of information the very first information talks about the title of the report the second part of the information or second block of the information is name title address of a person group or organization that's authorized for the report third block talks about the name address title of person group or organization who has prepared the report the fourth block talks about the date on which report was submitted so that is what is the format of a title page having four different blocks of information yes certain times you will be finding 
that when we talk about this name title both these things they are only replaced by submitted to and submitted by you don't go for the whole name title address everything but normally you are going to find in the situations that when you are preparing informal reports we go with this submitted to or submitted by but when it is proper formal reports for the external parties we go with this format right now comes the letter of authorization or the letter of acceptance when i say letter of authorization you might have received a letter of authorization which states that you are required to prepare this report right many a times this happens that if i am required to prepare a report i'll be getting letter of authorization from my senior and he is going to tell me that this is the way i need to prepare report and this is the topic this is what is letter of authorization i can put in the report also i can add as letter of acceptance if i have written the letter of acceptance to my senior that yes i agree i will be preparing this report but with these constraints these are the problems which i might face i want these resources i can put that letter also that is known as letter of acceptance after this you will be having letter of transmittal now letter of transmittal is actually an advantage to you you can quickly maintain a reputation between you between your report as well as between the audience so it is a specialized cover letter which is going to introduce report directly to the audience that what the report is all about but again that needs to be a very brief one not a detailed one also in this letter of transmittal you can acknowledge the efforts of the other people or the people who have helped you out in the preparation of this uh, report also you can go on for thank you note for giving assignment that i can thank my senior or my xyz person who has given me uh, who has assigned me this report so i can go on for thanking that person also so that is what is letter of transmittal is after letter of transmittal you can go on for table of contents which is going to specify that what is the outline of the coverage of your report what are the different sections in that what are the different headings in that and once that table of contents see you need to be very cautious when you are preparing table of contents if you are mentioning wrong page numbers then you are in the trouble then you need to go on for list of illustrations when i say list of illustrations it is just telling you that what are the different tables and figures and where they are placed another thing which is quite important is synopsis or executive summary synopsis or abstract is a small gesture wherein you are going to summarize the findings the key findings or the recommendations or the basic idea behind the report in comparison to synopsis and abstract executive summary is a more detailed one executive summary might have some pictures also whereas in synopsis or abstract we don't place the pictures so it is the brief overview not a lengthy element yes it tends to help you in establishing or advertising your report and many a times it is just on the basis of your the synopsis it decide it is being decided that whether the person is going to read or not read the report apart from this list of illustrations all visuals tables and figures is there then coming on to the text part that was about the prefatory parts text part you will be going with the introduction part wherein you will be introducing the uh, report in defined manner then it is about body part and the close closes conclusions recommendations limitations future scope you will talk about last is supplementary part yes there are certain things which are not the part of the report but yes it can be placed in the supplementary part the very first is appendices appendices is the related material which you are not able to place in the report but you are adding towards the end for the reference of the people of who are reading the report so that's an important material but you cannot place it in between 
that is what is appendices is about next is bibliography bibliography is a way that you can uh, thank uh, you can go on for listing the secondary sources you can give due acknowledgement to the other people from where you have collected the data again you can go for establishing different styles using different styles for preparing the bibliography section whether it can be apa style or chicago style or mla style and so on the last part of the supplementary part is index. Index is more about the alphabetical list of names and subjects mentioned in a report. All the key topics, all the key things, key product names, key people name. If you believe that's the important part of your report, you can place it in the index with the page number. So these are some of the strategies for effective corporate reports. Make sure the you are able to understand the audience, the language is good, the tone is good, the format is good. So in the session, whatever we have covered, you need to talk about this, that it should be formal English, proper citation should be there, proper acknowledgement should be there, proper format, everything needs to be there. So that is how you can go on for preparing a good corporate report. So, dear learners, I hope you are able to understand the objective as well as the need for corporate report and not just this, you are able to understand the different types and the situations when you can go on for preparing the different reports. Thank you and happy learning.